What is the crack, lads? Welcome back to another player review. Today we are taking a look at Manchester City and their club selection. So there is a couple of nice players in here. And obviously, as I always say in these reviews, if ye are newcomers, if you're downloaded a game recently and you don't have other versions of these players, or you don't want to spend like like hundreds of thousands of GP that you don't have or you don't want to save up and grind for. These players are an excellent introduction to like, you know, some of the best players in the game that you can train up and still put your own stamp on them. But they are kind of the finished article once you, you know, train them up maybe 10, 15 levels. You know, they're lower, uh, lower kind of time uh, spent that, that needs to be spent, I suppose, in terms of training them up or whatever, because they already have fairly beefy stats. So we are going to be going over to eFootballDB.com. We are going to be comparing them with their standard versions, a couple of them anyway. Um, we're going to concentrate on all the players. We're going to focus on every player and just kind of go into detail with the likes of Haaland, the likes of Diaz, Rodri, De Bruyne, Foden and Cancelo, uh, you know, Ederson and Akanji. They're kind of guys, you know, that they're a dime a dozen uh, for good goalkeepers and good centre backs in the game. But yeah, I mean, even looking at this guy here, obviously he is playing right back at the moment, I think, for City. Um, that's where he was playing yesterday, as far as I know. Again, he has excellent player skills. You've got your interception, your blocker and your man marking. So blocker and interception are the two biggest skills that you need. If you want to be very dominant at the back to be able to block passing lanes, the AI will kind of contextually put out their legs sometimes a lot more often than players that don't have that. I have a video out on that. If you guys have not watched it, check it out. Um, I will leave a link, a link, a leave a link in the link, a link in the description. But yeah, I mean, he's got very beefy stats. As I said, he's got fairly okay uh, speed. His acceleration is a bit poor, but tackling aggression, defensive awareness. Yeah, I mean, they're kind of run of the mill. There is players that you can get for 50,000 GP or under when they're fully maxed out will outperform a Kanji. Obviously, he's going to have a very high overall that if we go over to eFootballDB.com, you will see that this guy has got a 93 overall. But again, you're looking at some of the stats here and you're thinking, you know, what pushes that overall stat? up and to be honest with you we've been maxed out 81 speed 70 acceleration and 84 defensive aware, uh, awareness with tackling and aggression 94 they're kind of run of the mill for you know end game center backs if you are looking to get up to divisions you know get up to division four or three um anywhere you go past you know division four or three you're going to want to kind of have a defender that you can depend on like more often than not such as alaba rudiger up in meccano uh, Van Dyke, one of the top tier guys. Now, his standard version of the card is only 51,000 GP, and he does actually kind of track up fairly decently because this guy has got 25 levels, and his standard version of the card has 25 levels. So, if we hover over here, we will see that his standard card is nowhere near as good. So, you're talking about less in everything, including minus five in tackling. You're saying minus two in speed, minus two in acceleration, minus two in header, minus two in jump, physical contact. Everything is kind of minus two to minus three um down the line down the board so uh yeah i mean he is obviously an upgrade if you are looking to get him and if you do spin him um but there is other options there that i think would definitely be you know a better option now obviously he is on b form so it's going to be suitable for playing with him this week with the live update but yeah for me he is probably the run of the middle guy that's there uh moving on to foden and uh we will obviously have a look at Foden here. He's got excellent stats. I've mentioned Foden before in one of the player of the week reviews that we did, so I don't need to spend too much time on him. You know what you're getting with Foden. I mean, you look at the speed, the acceleration, offensive awareness and dribbling. That's all you really need for a winger. Now, I would play Foden left wing. That's where I would play him. You could play him SS, but his passing isn't good enough unless you really boost up his passing and, you know, then you're going to have to have him uh, with, like, you know, sub-90 um dribbling stats such as ball control dribbling and tight possession and his speed and acceleration will only be about like 84 and 86 so yeah i would definitely go this route with him and i would just turn him into an outright winger uh his form is unwavering at the moment but he does have a player update uh form so you will be you will be getting that live update form there for him, which is quite decent as well. So again, it just depends on how you want to play him because if you are going to be playing Foden, I would definitely play him on the wing or else left mid. He has got a lot of nice player skills as well. And that A form is always going to make a big difference as well as early crosser. You know, if he's swinging these into Haaland, if you do decide to spin a couple of these and get your free spin as well, you could get four of the players here. So you've got a very high chance of getting Haaland 
or Foden, I think, which are two picks of the pack. But there's just so many wingers there now that are actually able to do a job and cross the ball in. You saw a, a video that I did earlier, uh, yesterday I think it was, um, where I had your man Quintero, who is like a Beckham alternative, and he's practically Beckham reincarnated um except left footed so i mean there are player options out there hidden gems i'm going to be bringing a few more of those so yeah foden i think is a good player obviously his standard card is better um you can boost that up another 10 levels so you can get him up to that 93 overall or 92 overall so maybe check out that if you do have 260,000 gp but that's probably the, the the kind of risk reward is that like a lot of these players standard versions if you don't spin from they are going to cost a lot with gp so that's something to keep in mind Next up, we have got a Rodri, I think we're going to. And again, Rodri, I'm not going to spend too much time on him, even though he does have insane stats. This guy has never... I've never really like been able to do it with Rodri, lads. I just don't know. Now, he is a classic anchorman. I would actually like to spin him and try him out in like a range of games because he is on a form this week i definitely think he could be like meta this week um he's just been somebody that i've never really got on with i've played it with him in my second profile his standard card and i've tested him out a good bit um i was actually going to do a player reviewing him but i've always found that, that barrios is a better option especially as a budget option for him uh, and i don't know why that is but yeah i mean he's got insane passing insane passing player skills and then he's also got man marking interception and fighting spirit he doesn't have blocker which you know the best dmfs kind of do have but i do think that he is still an exceptional player and if we go over here to eFootballDB.com, we are going to see those stats. So you see there that his speed and acceleration, you don't need to worry about that as a DMF anchorman. He's going to be the last line of defense, really, before your CBs. Low pass, loft to pass, excellent. Kick and power, physical contact, and stamina, excellent. And then your defensive stats are really, really strong as well. I think the only thing that lets him down is that acceleration. But to be honest with you, you won't notice it that much if you play him in the, in the right position of a DMF anchorman. You know, you're not going to be bringing the ball forward with him like you might with Modric or Pedri. You know, you're not going to be doing that with him or Vieira or Goretzka or somebody like that. His standard version actually goes another five levels. So you can get that up fairly high. Um... His speed on his standard card is pretty identical. His dribbling, his passing, they're all minus two, you can see there. Um, but yeah, the one difference I would say is, again, the cost of the GP. Like, if you were looking to get Foden and Rodri on GP, they're going to cost you what? Like, you know, 550, 60,000 so, or 540,000. So it's going to be a lot uh, of, of GP if you don't have that. And again, when you look at the likes of Barrios, right, as an alternative, 51,000 GP, Defensive stats are better. Speed and acceleration is better. The only thing that lets him down is his passing, his lofted passing and his dribbling. And you don't really need dribbling. I think Rodri's tight possession is strong there, but his speed is a big letdown compared to 73 for somebody like Barrios, who's an 88 overall. And he's got all those defensive stats. And then obviously he's got better defensive uh, stats all around. So that is something to, to think of. Obviously Barrios' form is down. That's where the advantage for the, the Rodri, Rodri comes this week. Ruben Diaz, we will focus on him. We've already done a review on him before uh, in one of the player packs, and I've obviously mentioned him as one of my top defenders in the game. I would say he's in top five, lads. I don't see that many people use him compared to like the likes of Alaba, Rudiger, but if you look at his stats, he does have really good stats across the board defensively. Um, excellent. Everything is in the high, you know, the mid 90s, which is fantastic. And then your speed and acceleration is fine. His jump, his physical contact and his stamina is fine. His header is fine. He is just kind of a, a division one to division two center back. That is what he is. Now, his standard version goes another couple of levels, but he's extremely dear, 420,000 GP. And uh, you are going to get him up to that level, you know, that 92, 93 overall. But I do think that if you are going to be spending that much money on a center back, you probably have to look at getting Van Dyke as well, because Van Dyke is, you know, excellent in that position as well. So who else do we have? We also have Zhao Cancelo here as well. Again, I have focused on Zhao Cancelo recently enough. He's got excellent stats, lads. I mean, all these players, you know, I keep repeating it, but all these players are going to be some of the best in the game. Unwavering form, on A rating. He's going to be up literally every single game. He's going to give you an advantage with the player form arrow. His defensive awareness, yeah, it is a little bit low, but again, we don't need to worry too much about that. 
if we are going to be using him as kind of like an attacking base player, um, that is how I would do it. You know, you're not going to have to worry too much about it. And then also on top of that, you've got your high speed, high acceleration that goes up extremely high um, and that you can, you know, push him into that left midfield or right midfield position as a right wing back as well if you want to do that. Um, we've also got Ederson here as well. Ederson is, again, he's a very good keeper. He does have standard form. I think the problem with Ederson, lads, is there's just so many keepers in the game that are, you know, probably better than him. Like, if you look at the stats here, he's got 92 reflexes and 90 cash in when you max him out. But compare him to Cassius, who was released. I know not everyone got Cassius as a legend. But even Donnarumma or Oblak or one of the keepers like that, uh, Ramsdale, like, levels up quite decently to him. So the two big ones, I suppose, that we will focus on now are Haaland and De Bruyne. So Haaland is a very interesting one because... You either love or hate Haaland, probably like in real life. You either love playing with Haaland in eFootball 23 or you don't. You know, that's it's as simple as that. I actually love using him. I play really, really well with him. Um, he is on A form, so he is going to be in everybody's team, you would say. Anyone that's from Division 1, 2, 3 or 4 are going to have Haaland either on their team or in their, on their bench because he does have super sub, which is incredible. So he is the most valuable super sub there by a mile. His standard version is 640,000 GP. So that's going to be out of range for most people that have started the game or most people that have actually bought a lot of players before. But you could get the standard version if you want. Obviously, there's been a couple of player of the week editions as well. But this version of him is very, very similar to the standard version that we would have trained up or any of the other versions you have him here. He only has seven levels to go there. So this is obviously not an accurate rating because he's got 19 out of seven levels. He's got 19 out of 25 here. So he has room to grow. But this card is 19 out of 19. So 88 kick and power 87 jump 84 physical contact offensive awareness and finishing is unreal speed is unreal acceleration is decent his balance is the big key stat here his balance and tight possession are the big letdown for this card i mean if Haaland had 75 tight possession and maybe 80 balance he would be you know cristiano ronaldo uh my club style like he would be super 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 op where every single player would use him a lot of people use him as a standard uh card or a the standard card of him as a super sub and this is the standard card it measures up extremely well the standard card actually trains up better it just costs a bit more points to put in you've got better speed you've got better kick and power you've got um one less offensive awareness but everything else is pretty identical so if you do have the money burning a hole i'm sure you already have bought Haaland, but yeah he definitely is the pick of the bunch and then last but not least we do have kevin de bruyne 87 overall and uh, again, this guy is a magician. He's got unbelievable player skills. He's got unwavering form. He's on B rating this week. One touch pass, true pass and weighted pass, pinpoint crossing, soul control, long range curler and shooting and low lofted pass. The low lofted pass is beautiful if you do power driven shots or power driven passes across the pitch. If you do a lot of switches like I do. Um, I do have De Bruyne, his standard card or his other card. So he is excellent for me and I love using him. I don't use him you know, that often, but I do love him when he is playing for me. Um, but again, when we do max out De Bruyne here, we do have a lot of options with him. His kick and power, his low pass, lofted pass you know, insane in the in the mid-90s. And then we've got ball control, tight possession, offensive awareness, speed, all in the 80s. And then, obviously, we do have the unwavering form, all the player skills that you could want. His acceleration and finishing and dribbling are very average, but they will do for the position you're going to be playing him in as an AMF. You're not going to be bringing the ball forward with him. I would be using this guy as kind of like a whole player and just dictating where to put the ball, like Modric. And again, his standard card does stack up extremely well here. He's just minus two in kicking power, and that is it. So you could get uh, De Bruyne if you've got the money and train him up for this exact card. The only difference is the kicking power minus two. You know, it's identical otherwise, which is kind of crazy that they've balanced the game so well this year in terms of the player cards. So, yeah, um, but that is it, lads. That is it for the Manchester City review. Um, let me know what you guys think if you're going to spin or skip, and I will talk to you later. Hope you guys subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I will have more episodes up later or more videos up later, including Dream Team Chronicles being back. So hope you guys enjoy that. And Subscriber Showdown will be happening again either tonight or tomorrow. So keep an eye on that. All right, lads. Peace.